Hello YouTube, it's Eyal again here, and I have a few thoughts I wanted to share with you. Uh, as you can tell from the title, this is basically about science, physics. Um, basically, negative energy. If you Google it, I'm pretty sure you'll find a lot of articles about healing, auras, and new age stuff. Um, I'm not talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about gravity. Let me explain it to you like this. Now, what does negative energy mean? Well, in short, it's meaningless. But by the end of this video, you will either believe one of, agree with one of two things: either objects can have negative energy, or that the law of conservation of energy is nonsense. And let me start with a small demonstration. If I hold this little blue guy. Right here. How much energy does he have? Well, who knows? And I'm not talking about chemical energy that you get from burning it, uh, or the energy in its own mass, uh, E equals MC squared. I'm just talking about this object right here, standing, it has a mass, it has uh, a height from the ground. Well, basically it has what is called potential energy. That is, how much energy you get if you drop it. Now, it has some energy. We don't know how much. Does it matter right now? Now, how much energy does it have a little bit higher? More or less? Well, if I drop it and it will reach the ground, it will reach the ground with a higher speed than if I drop it from right here. So that means it will get more energy out of the fall. Therefore, it has to start with more energy. Therefore, up here, it has more energy than down here. And over here, it has even less energy. In all these three locations, uh, if it's not moving, then the highest energy is at the top, lower energy, and lower energy, and so on. So, then the question comes, how much energy does it have at uh, infinity? Well, it would have all the energy it would get from going from infinity to Earth, to the ground. And since it will fall to the ground, it will come eventually at some speed. Basically, it, is, it will be the escape velocity of it and that will be its energy. So basically an object at infinity has the amount of energy you have from the kinetic energy at escape velocity from the planet that you're measuring the energy from. Yeah, I know. Long, complicated. Uh, you can even Google potential energy or gravity potential energy in Wiki and has an explanation there. The bottom line is that the closer you get to the object, as long as you're not moving, the less energy you have. But the closer you get, the bigger the difference between how much you had uh, from a little bit before. So if you have a black hole or something very, very massive, then the amount of energy uh, you should be having at infinity towards it is very, very high. Okay, uh, with the magic of editing, you didn't see anything. So, uh, let me get back to the point and try to make it better. Um, basically, the higher up you are, the more potential energy you have. And according to, conserv to the conservation of energy um, law, basically, uh, once you fall, you, that potential energy will be turned into kinetic energy. Now, uh, Escape velocity uh, from a planet uh, or star or whatever basically is the amount of velocity you need from that point in order to reach infinity. What does it that mean? It means that um, at infinity uh, you will have the exact amount of potential energy as you had uh, as kinetic energy uh, when you're trying to escape. Well, kinetic plus uh, the potential from the point you're trying to escape. Now, if we consider some more extreme cases, like a black hole, uh, the amount of kinetic energy you need to escape from a black hole, or you need the speed of the speed of light uh, squared times the mass over 2, that is the amount of uh, uh, kinetic energy you need, and at infinity, that is the amount of potential energy you'll, you'll have. Now, 
that is a lot of energy. That means basically right here we are very far away from a thousand, <laughs> I mean almost infinite different black holes and we have about c squared times our mass energy from each of them. So basically our potential energy is very, very, very high. And doesn't and mathematics doesn't really work well with such big numbers. Uh, so what they decided to do is the scientist uh, Newton, I don't know, whoever came up with the idea of potential energy, is to put the amount of energy you have at infinity to be zero. And that means, and it also makes sense to a degree, so at infinity, where the planet that you are uh, measuring from is insignificant, you can't even see it, you can't even feel it, detect it, anything, you'll have zero energy. That means the planet is not affecting your energy. Uh, and that makes sense. The only problem is that as you get closer to the planet, obviously your speed goes up as a result of gravity, your energy goes down, like we mentioned before, and becomes negative. Now the idea is that the sum of the two energies, the potential and the kinetic, will always remain zero, unless you're burning fuel or something on the, on the way. So basically that's the idea of zero energy. The potential energy you get from gravity is negative and uh, it balance, balances out the kinetic energy you get from, well, again, from gravity. Uh, where this all comes into play is when you consider the universe. Uh, the basic idea is that the total amount of energy in the universe, the sum of all the kinetic energy, chemical energy, whatever energy and potential energy of mass in the universe will event is zero. And the only way you can get that is if there is something that causing the negative energy. And the negative energy comes from the potential energy of things that are <laughs> far away from uh, objects. So this is about it. Um, hope someone learned something from it. And anyway, I enjoyed sharing it.